Now let's talk about the prototype design pattern, another creational pattern. First, let's kind of summarize the other creational patterns. The factory method is good for when we know what type of object we want, and we just want to instantiate some instances of it. We can have different factories that implement the same interface, which gives us some polymorphism flexibility. We talked about the singleton, which is good if we just want a single instance of an object. And the builder, where we might want like precise control of how that object is actually built, rather than just instantiating generic instances of it. So the prototype has almost no overlap with the singleton. It also doesn't have a lot of overlap with the builder pattern because with the builder, we can actually specify how we want that object instantiated. The prototype is not gonna let us do that, at least not entirely. Among all of these patterns, it's probably most similar to the factory method because with the prototype, we can actually just call a single method to instantiate objects. We can call the dot clone method, but which object is this method gonna belong to? Because with factories, factories actually instantiate the individual objects themselves. Objects are not responsible, of course, for instantiating other objects. That wouldn't really follow the single responsibility principle. But cloning is actually different. The clone method actually belongs to the object itself. But in general, the way the prototype is implemented, it doesn't really create additional reasons for the object itself to change, which is why it doesn't really violate the single responsibility principle too much. So first, let's look at how this is implemented. At a high level, it's kind of like the factory method in that there's an interface responsible for creating objects, and then we have concrete implementations of those. But in this case, again, the creator of the object and the actual concrete object itself is the same thing. An object is allowed to clone itself. Why might that be useful? Because mostly polymorphism. These concrete objects could be casted as the prototype interface. And when they are that, and they're supplied to some client class, that client may not know the exact concrete implementation, but if it wants to create additional copies of it, it doesn't necessarily need to because each concrete class will have its own clone method. This object will know how to create itself. This object will know how to create itself. So it can call clone without knowing what the implementation is. You can also imagine that cloning an object if we were to do it separately, like if we were to manually do that with the new keyword, of course, we'd have to know how to create it itself. It could be complicated. That's just one problem. We might have to pass in a bunch of variables. But another problem is it might not actually be possible for us to accurately duplicate that object. There could be a bunch of private state variables within that object. Yes, we can create another instance of that object with the new keyword, but we can't copy everything about that object's hidden state because it might be private. We don't have access to it, but there's something special about calling the clone method from the class itself. If there are private fields, we can implement the logic to copy those within the clone method. Like let's say there's a private field and let's just say it's cost, it's some integer, and this cannot necessarily be supplied via the constructor. But within this clone method, we can instantiate it because if we were cloning this object, we could just say, okay, for the new object, after we've created that new object, assume that this is the object, then we could say, okay, object dot cost is gonna be equal to the cost of the original object that we are cloning. So it allows us to do things that wouldn't necessarily be possible otherwise. To look at an actual example, here you can see we might have a document prototype. For example, in something like Google Docs, if you want to duplicate a document, it can be relatively easy to do that with the prototype pattern. Or if you wanted to duplicate any type of object, for example, in like video games, you wanna create clones of objects and things like that. So the prototype interface in this case is going to be pretty simple. It's always going to have some clone method. It could also have additional methods as well that the implementing classes would implement. So a document in this case can be displayed. So we have some fields here and we have some methods. And whenever we want to clone this, we will basically just set all of the fields exactly the same within the clone method. We want everything to be exactly the same about the state so that when a client actually calls clone, it doesn't have to pass anything in and it knows that it's getting a deep copy of the original object. 
And the additional logic as well over here, you can see that a document has a list of images. When we call the clone method, do you think we want to clone these in a shallow way? Do you think each document will share the exact same image list or will each document have its own copy of those images? Probably their own copies, right? If we're cloning a document, we want to clone all the fields as well. So imagine if we were trying to implement that logic from the client. Leaving that responsibility up to the object itself is good because the object already knows about its own structure. So here's what some simplified code of a document implementing a prototype might look like. It has the fields that we kind of talked about. In the constructor itself, you can see we're actually handling most of the logic of actually creating a document given all these fields. So given the content, images, formatting, and annotations. And for those lists, those objects, we are actually creating deep copies of those objects. That's going to be pretty useful for us because whether we're instantiating this object with the new keyword or we're just more simply cloning the object without providing all that stuff, making it easier for ourselves, we can pass just the instance variables, the images, the annotations, and then within the constructor, we are guaranteed that deep copies of that will be made. So this is a high level version. Instead of passing these fields in, we could have actually passed in less fields. Like for example, if we didn't have have formatting, we could have had a date object. It tells us the date that this document was created. In general, we don't have to pass that in to this variable because every time we create that object, we're just going to instantiate a new date, get the current time and assign that to the instance variable. So that's how a normal document would be created. But if we were to call the constructor, if we're trying to clone a document and we call the constructor, well, obviously the date of the two documents is not going to match. The clone is going to have the current time be its date, but the original that we just copied is going to have a previous time when that object was created. So if we want the dates to match and the date field happens to be private, how would we do it? Well, within the clone method, we can literally just say that for the new document that we created, its date is going to be assigned to the date of the current object. And we're allowed to do that because we're within the object itself. It's private. So I'll leave things there, but I highly recommend you check out the problem where you can implement this yourself. There should be a code yourself button. You can implement the prototype method and run the test cases to ensure that you have understood what this pattern entails.